Hi, this is Mr. Dutton's Physics 9 class, and we are looking at a crash test barrier design challenge. Here we have our vernier track that's running along. It's 100, um, well, it's 121 centimeters long. We have a buck at the far end all the way down here at 100 centimeters. Um, it's the standard conceptual physics book where it raises it up. And so we've got around about um, five degree angle. Um, I've got the go direct sensor with an adapter on the front that the adapter is um, laser cut and matches the front of the cart. So that when our carts come down, the force is evenly distributed across that front surface area of the sensor. And this sensor can go up to 50 newtons. But we have our track set at five degrees and we're constraining ourselves to being 50 centimeters away from the end. So 40 centimeters away from this front center, which is at 10 centimeters. Okay, so when a car comes down and crashes into that, we got an elastic collision and we want to take some data. So we're going to take that data with Vernier graphical analysis. So I'm going to open up Vernier. I'm going to grab it over onto the right hand side of the screen. And now it's asking me for what I want to do. As soon as I enter and put in the USB cable into here, will automatically sense and know that we want to be looking at force versus time. I want to make some changes by hitting the mode button down on the bottom left hand corner. I want to go to actually not 50 but 500 samples per second and instead of triggering manually I want to trigger on when we actually contact with this force sensor. So um, the force sensor reads negatively in, in this direction. So I'm going to, if it decreases and goes past negative one Newton, then it will be triggered. Um, I can actually look at some data before that trigger. And so I'm going to give it 10 data points beforehand. And I don't want it to go on for five seconds because the reaction is super, super fast. So I'm just going to have it at 0.25 seconds. Okay. Click done on that. And so now you can see my X axis, my time scale is just 0.25 seconds. Um, my force is both positive and negative, um, but I am only going to be reading a negative force. Um, again, if you can see down here, we can see the force reading. And so as soon as I touch this, you can see as I increase the force on there, it goes negative. Okay. And if I bring my cart up to here and let it drop and bring it all the way down, you can see the force of the cart on there. Okay. As soon as I've got it weight on trigger, if I collect, it's now waiting for the force to decrease across negative one newtons. I hold the cart at 50 centimeters away, release, and we have an immediate response here. Notice that there was some, uh, there was an elastic collision that went back up and came back down. Because that is beyond the 0.25 seconds, we don't get to see this. So we get the, just the initial impact, which is exactly what we want. Um, so we can see here, if we click on here, that we've got negative 27 newtons as a maximum force. We should be with this setup, um, be experiencing between minus 25 to minus 30 newtons. And then this is all happening. It's uh, that force is um, decaying down and it's still all happening within 0 0.05 seconds, 50 milliseconds. Um, Let's go and see, oh, before we go and see what uh, something looks like with an example crash barrier, um, let's go and have a look at the area under this curve because the area under the curve of force times time will actually be representative of our impulse. 
So we need to use a function called integral, which is taking the area. And if you look um, at all the colored area underneath here, it comes out to around about negative 0.25, and our units, of course, are going to be Newton seconds. That equates to our change in momentum, which would be in kilograms meters per second. So knowing this, let's go ahead and collect some more data. But this time, we're going to put a crash barrier in between. So here's my crash barrier. I'm going to hold this at 50 centimeters and release. And you can see a very different trace here. Uh, my maximum now has gone down to 10 newtons, and I'm doing this within 0.75 seconds. We're actually starting a little bit before there, so we're going from negative 0 0.06. I'm just going to call that still 0 0.075 seconds. So that's 75 milliseconds. Um, a longer time, a, um, a, a lower force, as we would expect. Um, let's go see what our integral looks like. And we're around about the same. We're around about point, negative 0.25 Newton seconds. So things seem to be matching up. So this was with a simple rolled up piece of paper, like a pillow with two staples in the end. Okay, let's see what you can do.